What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus package update and infrastructure news report. Now today we have some updates regarding what lawmakers are currently discussing so I want to bring that to you and at the end of this video we're going to discuss the supply chain shortages and issues we're seeing both here in the United States and over in China. So I want to talk to you about that because we could be seeing more and more shortages coming up very soon. But let's get into the update on the infrastructure bills, where lawmakers currently stand, what we are potentially going to see moving forward. First, if you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below, and I will answer those questions in the upcoming video. So here's what we know so far. Over the past few weeks, many have been saying, and a large amount of Democrats have been saying and pleading to let's just get this infrastructure bill passed. Let's just get it passed. Some say that the American people need more help. Others say that this is going to address the affordable housing crisis and provide Americans with more relief. And one person says seniors can't wait for health care. They cannot wait for their coverage for vision, dental, and hearing. They need this bill to pass immediately. Well, other experts say that these two infrastructure bills are not for the American people. There's no stimulus in these bills. They argue that when you strip out the majority of the stimulus that was originally in the bill, these are not for the people any longer. And you guys have been saying this for the past few weeks as well, and I really want to touch on this. Because right now, what we are hearing is lawmakers are calling this the, the Build Back Better plan. We're going to build this thing back better. They also say this is going to be the biggest stimulus package that we see. But there's very little stimulus in this bill. The child tax credit payments, that right now is really the only form of stimulus. Will we see a stimulus voucher for people, uh, for social security recipients, for seniors? We don't know. We honestly do not know because they're still writing this bill. Or technically they really haven't even started. They're trying to come up with the framework first. Experts say that we need more. One GOP member said that the human infrastructure bill is looking more like a disguised Green New Deal. And it's not a Build Back Better plan. It's not the American Families plan. It's not a stimulus package. It's a disguised Green New Deal. One Democratic lawmaker asked, where did all of our priorities go? Why are we the only ones that are shrinking our own bill? And why can't we just agree that passing a transformative bill for the American people is the best way out of this pandemic? And I think that's very interesting. Why are Democrats shrinking their own bill? It's because of two people, Senator uh, Cinema, Senator Kirsten Cinema, and Senator Joe Manchin. Those two people are causing Democrats to shrink their bill, to cut priorities, to make sure the American people are struggling a little bit longer simply because of those two people. We heard from Senator Mitt Romney. He says, Democrats are so desperate to pass Biden's economic legislation that they will accept just about anything at this time. And I think that's very interesting as well because there's been times where some lawmakers, some Democratic lawmakers and progressives have said, let's just get this deal done. We'll move on to the next one. Let's just pass this bill, we'll pass the rest in the next budget reconciliation. But honestly, are we going to see another budget reconciliation? We can't get this one done. So for lawmakers to say, let's just get it done, let's put whatever we can in it, let's get as big as we can and we'll just accept it, then we'll move on to the next one. That, that's, that's not really the way it works because just because you have a budget reconciliation, just because you can use the this little stipulation doesn't mean you're going to get this bill passed. And so that's what I think is so frustrating at this time is that lawmakers say, let's just pass this. We'll move on to the next one. Well, the next one may or may not ever come. So that's the hard part right now. And in a recent poll that was done today, or the, the reports came out today from Axios and from Ipsos, they say that only 44% of Americans are confident that President Biden can ensure a quick economic recovery. Well, that number is actually down from 52% back in January. So he dropped 8% in those, what, eight months, 10 months? The same poll found 
that only 45% of people trust what President Biden is, that he's actually providing accurate information when it comes to the COVID pandemic. Well, this number dropped by 13% since January. So right now, people are not really believing what President Biden has to say. When it comes to Dr. Anthony Fauci, less people believe him. When it comes to lawmakers, a lot of people do not listen to what they have to say. So right now it's becoming a very big issue. And a lot of people are upset as to how the, the current administration uh, and Democrats in Congress are not passing more for the American people. They say you have the power, you have the House, have the majority in the House, the Senate, and you hold the presidency. Those three things. There's no reason why we went from $3.5 trillion down to maybe two, possibly only $1.5 to $1.75 trillion. They say we need more. But just to give you an idea as to what is currently holding up this spending package. And again, we were we were hoping to see this bill. We we're going to see the framework of this by today or maybe tomorrow. We would see a vote in the House of Representatives on the $1.2 trillion bill tomorrow. But we got news there. Pramila Jayapal came out and said uh, that no, she's not expecting this to happen by tomorrow, but she wants to see it happen by the end of this week. I'll address that in a minute, but let's first discuss what is currently holding back this Build Back Better plan. Here's what I can tell you. Medicare and Medicaid and the expansion of both is holding this up. As far as Medicare, what we know is uh, Senator Joe Manchin doesn't want to see Medicare expanded. He wants to see that the program is shored up. Okay, It's stabilized first before they expand it. He also says for Medicaid that right now uh, they're doing a, this like a 90-10 split. Well, he doesn't believe that states that have held out should be able to get 100% of these benefits. He just doesn't believe that's the case and then not have to pay anything. So right now he's holding back on that. Paid family leave. I know we talked about this before and that we went from 12 weeks down to just four weeks, but the expectation is this could potentially be cut. Those four weeks could potentially be cut. And this is something that progressives have said is a priority, it has to be included into this bill. But again, as I said earlier, progressives are willing to accept just about anything in order to get this deal done, be able to push forward with this, this uh, climate policy Right, because President Biden wants it. He doesn't want to look like the United States is doing absolutely nothing. So he wants this to pass before November 1st. That's next Monday. So it's not looking great at this time. Taxes on corporations. Democrats want to tax corporations, but Senator Kirsten Sinema does not. What we are hearing is that right now, according to progressives, these large corporations that pay nearly nothing in taxes are gonna skate by and not have to pay anything once again. And this is under Democrat control. So right now they say that we have to do more. We know the child tax credit payments are something that many people firmly believe is going to be a good thing. But the big issue is who is this money going to? According to Senator Joe Manchin, he still wants to see the work requirements included and for the one year, he wants to make sure that people have a $60,000 income limit in order to get these child tax credit payments. He says a family making $150,000 per year probably does not need a child tax credit payment. So we'll see what happens there. We also know regarding climate change, this is another big one. Senator Joe Manchin doesn't support the current provision. So this is still something that is up in the air, but according to progressives and President Biden, climate change must be addressed and it must be addressed soon, but when I say soon, I'm talking about next week by Monday. If it's not, who knows if we see this bill even pass because there's still so much stuff that they have to negotiate. But according to Nancy Pelosi, they are 90% there. And this was as of Sunday. So we should be closer as of yesterday and this morning. Now tomorrow, the House was planning to vote on this $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill. But in order to do that, According to reports, we still need the framework of the human infrastructure bill. Yeah, that's important. But this is what uh, Pramila Jayapal had to say yesterday. She, was, she is the US Progressive House Caucus Chairwoman. 
she says she will not vote on the bipartisan bill alone. Both bills must be voted on back to back. She is not interested in just the framework of the human infrastructure bill. She wants to see the text of this bill before the bipartisan bill is even voted on. However, does the human infrastructure bill have to be voted on first, then the bipartisan bill? We don't know. But the expectation is as long as the text is there, lawmakers have the time to read it, review it, then as long as the, the votes are going to happen back to back, doesn't matter which one's first, expectation is that progressives would vote for both bills. But would moderates vote for both bills? That's what we don't know. Lawmakers say that this is going to take potentially weeks to get a finalized text done. So the expectation is as of this morning that we are not going to anticipate a vote going to happen tomorrow in the, in the House of Representatives. We are not going to see the text of this bill until possibly maybe the end of this week. However, like I said, experts and lawmakers are saying this is going to take weeks to finalize. If Nancy Pelosi, if her statement was true, and this bill is being written at the same time that they're putting the framework together, there is a chance we could see this bill by the end of this week. But if this bill has not been written, they're just taking little notes, then this bill will take weeks and we may not see this bill until the middle to end of November. But again, the end of November, we have a, a holiday. We have Thanksgiving. Lawmakers are going to take off the week. So don't expect something to happen at the end of November. If something does happen, it would either be before or after, potentially the maybe the first week or two in December. So again, not great news, but again, it's more delays. I said this months ago. Democrats are, are notorious for just having multiple delays. You know, Republicans do the same thing. But Democrats, especially with Nancy Pelosi, she always blows through her deadlines because she, she overpromises and under delivers. So we'll see what happens there, but let's get into the supply chain issues. Here's what we know, and this isn't great news, okay? Not only is the LA port jam right now in a jam because of all the, the ships waiting out in the sea, but here's something else that we figured out yesterday. Chinese officials are saying that the thousands of empty 40 foot container ships, okay, shipping containers, are actually needed in China. That they need these these ships back in these uh, containers back in China so that they can reload them and send them back. So there's another issue there. There's not enough containers in China, and a lot of these these uh, shipping companies they need these containers. These are not used one time and disposed of. These are reusable. They ship the stuff over. You know we may ship stuff back or they're just empty, empty containers that they need. But because of this backlog of container ships, just, or containers uh, just sitting right now in the ports, what we are being told, and this is for both full and emptied containers, that they will now be assessed fines. According to the LA port, they will now be assessed fines for any container um, or any container that is supposed to be moved by a truck well, you got nine days to move it. If it's supposed to be moved by rail, you have just three days to move it. So these fines are going to come. It's going to be $100 on day nine for any, any, any container that needs to be moved by truck. $100 uh, on day three if it's supposed to be moved by rail. Then it's going to tack on an additional $100 per container for every single day. That, that, that container is still sitting there. And again, this is for either full or empty containers. If it's full, get it on a truck, move it to wherever it needs to go. If it's empty, you need to get it back onto the ship so that the ship can take it back to China or wherever it needs to go. That's what we're hearing at this time. So let me just, let me just address this. Right now, some are saying that we may have to wait even longer to get our products off these, off these ships that are sitting in the sea just because we have to get the, the containers back onto the other ships so that they can take them back to wherever they need to go. So again, this is causing more and more delays. But 
That is what we're hearing as of right now. Again, as I know more regarding the, the stimulus situation, the infrastructure bill, what President Biden is doing, what the current uh, you know administration is doing, what Congress is saying, or what is going on with our supply chain issues, I promise I will bring you those updates as soon as possible. Again, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.